Now that we know how to do reversible computation, one nice thing that it lets us do is uh, you know this notion of uncomputing. So, in particular when we do our computation we might be using some extra bits which we call ancillary bits. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so let us let us look at this picture here. right? So, basically here I have this circuit which has some input you know <coughs> sorry x 1 to x n and I have a, a bunch of zeros. Okay, these are ancillary inputs. So, these, these end up being very useful. We have already seen in uh, examples that uh, like of small gates also, we have seen that you know you can have some one wire, maybe it is hard wired with some value or you know you want to copy something into that register. So, you could have some sort of dummy uh, uh, bits hanging around, ancillary bits right and uh, the uh, notion of reversibility allows you to forget about these ancillary bits and why is that? So, this is just the reason I am discussing this is just because you know it, it cleans up our notation a little bit and as we go further it is very useful to have the simplest notation possible. So, what this is going to let us do this uh, notion of uncomputing is that when we think of a circuit which has a bunch of ancillary bits right is going to allow us to forget about them and how does it let us do that it's because it's because uh, i can uh, i can uncompute these ancillary bits so if you see in this picture what is happening i have some input i have some ancillary uh, inputs right and uh, here I have a, you know a register which I use to copy the output right. So, I am using the C naught gate to copy the output yeah. So, I am thinking of a function f from <coughs> 0 1 to the n to 0 1 this is my function that I am considering ok. And, uh, I am using these uh, you know k extra zeros in order to perform this computation and finally, at the end of the com computation I am using this uh, C naught gate to copy the output to this wire right. So, I hope that it makes sense to everyone how I am going to copy the output. So, if, if my f of x is uh, 0 then I will get 0 in the output because you know the control bit will be set to 0 if it is 1 then it will flip flip the uh, 0 over here. So, then I will get 1. So, I am using this uh, C naught to copy the output and now what I will do is simply I will apply this uh, the inverse of this uh, transformation to these bits to recover back my uh, ancillary bits in a fresh state. So, I have uncomputed. So, basically I did some computation I used them in some way right and now having used them in some way I am just going to perform the inverse of the computation. So, that uh, at the end of it so remember I am not uncomputing my answer you can see that here in this picture right. So, I am not applying u inverse to kill my answer I am just applying it to refresh my uh, you know dummy things. And what this lets me do is it lets me write the circuit as, as this just you know x tensor 0 goes to x tensor output. So, this is uh, you know a little bit of a technicality, but uh, it is useful for us to see why we are doing this because in future classes you know we will we'll construct circuits and, and so on and we will have these ancillary bits, but we will keep ignoring them. So, it might create confusion as to why that is a legitimate thing to do. So, that is why I just wanted to briefly talk about this and now we will never think about this. So, we will just ignore ancillary bits from here on ok. So, now, now I claim we can compute right. So, <coughs> let us first uh, define what implementation of a classical function means. We will say that a quantum circuit C f implements a classical function f going from uh, n bits to m bits if for any setting of the input right. So, for any x and y 
we have that uh, c of x y and uh, 0 to the k goes to x y plus f x. So, I mean previously we were thinking of y as 0. Okay, so, previous in this picture we are thinking of a boolean function right? and we are thinking uh, we are thinking of y as 0 is that clear to everyone. Yeah, we are thinking of a boolean function and we are thinking of our y as 0, but more generally we will see why this is useful. So, it is not that I always want to simply copy the output, we will see examples today itself uh, or maybe next class where it is very useful to play around with these values of y. Okay, so, uh, for any y it does not matter 0 or if it is 0 then I am just going to get x f of x, right? but uh, otherwise I will get y x or f of x and we also saw that we can ignore these. So, we will just write it like this. Okay? So, now we are uh, ready to claim that we can compute any classical circuit and the schematic that we have generally for this is like you know we draw a box. So, you know our function c f is sitting here. So, we have our x here, we have some y here okay, and we get. So, this x could be I do not know it could be n bits or whatever. So, previously we said it is n bits, right? Uh, but I do not want to specify that here. Okay, so, x and y could be of any length, uh, the size of y and f of x needs to be the same. Okay, so, for uh, simplicity we will typically think of them as boolean, anyway in computer science we, we just like to think about boolean functions, because any function with a longer output can be written as many boolean functions, right. So, it suffices to think of boolean functions. So, this will be y x or f of x. Okay, and uh, I hope that I have convinced you that uh, you can in fact uh, handle any deterministic circuit. We, we worked out all the pieces needed for that, right? We needed the computation to be reversible, we needed to be able to simulate uh, a universal gate. We picked a universal gate, we saw that it is universal and then we talked about how to uh, sort of use a Toffoli gate instead of a NAND gate. Right, so, we have set up all the machinery that we need. Uh, it was a little bit tedious maybe, but it is it's, uh, important to set up the language correctly. Right? We also spent some time thinking about why the ancillary bits do not matter. And now, we are finally ready to say this. So, you know we are happy. So, now we can compute, uh, we can compute uh, all classical functions. So, at the very least we proved that uh, quantum computing is not going to be any weaker than classical computing. The only thing we are trying, okay, the question is that uh, can we uncompute without ancillary bits and the answer is that the, the uncomputation we were doing was for the sake of refreshing the ancillary bits. Of course, in general you can have fun by you know uh, computing any u and u inverse and u and u inverse it is like uh, sort of going backwards and forwards in the same place. But uh, the reason that we were interested in that was to say that these ancillary bits can be ignored right. So, here we said right th there are these ancillary bits here. So, what we talked about is that these uh, ancillary bits of all zeros at the start of the computation they are fresh. Now, after the computation they could be arbitrarily entangled with the input and the output, right? Uh, but I do not want to think about them, because my goal here is simply to compute f of x. So, what I will do is I will simply uncompute these ancillary the circuit on the ancillary bits. So, I will recover the all zeros. So, now because my input is the all, all zeros and the output is also the all zeros I can just drop this from my consideration. So, this like I said this is uh, you know me I do not know if uh, everyone will agree that this is worth discussing, but I think it is important because I mean uh, if, if you are dropping something from the game, right, then there has to be a justification for that. So, that this is the justification. 
and uh, aside from claiming that we can compute any deterministic classical circuit, I claim that we can also compute any randomized classical circuit and why is this? It is because as we saw you can just generate true randomness using Hadamard, right. So, prepare the Hadamard state and measure using the standard basis. This gives you a, a prob like it gives you a random classical bit, right. So, as we saw is, is that clear? So, many are looking a little bit lost, is it fine? So, as we saw we can generate <coughs> true randomness by using Hadamard basis states measured using the classical pieces. Okay. Right. Yeah. So the question is, uh, isn't this already? So you know, I was saying that uh, we've captured classical computation, and what he's pointing out is that in fact we are doing better because uh, in uh, classical uh, computation we don't actually have true randomness. We typically use like pseudo random generators and things like that to get uh, random bits. Um, whereas, here it appears that you are getting an unlimited supply of uh, truly random bits. So, yeah, it, it does seem already like an improvement, but uh, okay. So, yes, it is it is true, you know. So, for any uh, you know simulating any random process, a quantum circuit is sort of just naturally more, uh, more uh, well fitting. Right, because uh, inherently there is randomness built into it, which in the classical setting you do not have. Right, so in that sense, it is true. I, I was hesitating a little bit because you know, in, in real uh, in real life, I am saying, well, this is also real life, but in uh, in classical computation, also this uh, randomness generally, so far as we know, does not really give us more power. So, we we get this randomness by running uh, whatever pseudo random generators and so on, but we do not know at least I do not know of any examples where uh, the randomness or the randomized uh, circuit is uh, computing something beyond what a deterministic circuit can compute. The reason that we use randomized circuits is for efficiency. So, usually what we can show and it is very, very interesting theory by the way. I mean, if you have not seen much of it, then you know we offer courses in the department. So, randomized computation is very, very interesting, randomized algorithms. The way they usually work is that uh, you know they will make the computation more efficient. The fact of randomness typically introduces some probability of error. Okay, so, it is a little bit like trading of uh, correctness for efficiency, but the error probability can be driven down to be so small that pretty much uh, it is never going to happen. I mean it can be driven down to be so small that you know it is uh, it is an unphysical quantity this probability of error. So, in our universe it will never happen. Okay, and uh, this will give you the benefits of a much faster algorithm, Tip typically that is how we use it, but it is not that uh, they do more. So, that is why I was a little bit hesitant to concede that you know already uh, quantum is doing uh, really better. I mean in terms of feasibility, um, we do not know that randomized does better than deterministic, right if we do not care about the, the uh, running time per se, we do we do not know that randomized is better. So, in that case, uh, you know a quantum simulating randomized is not, uh, I cannot say it is a clear win over a deterministic circuit computing the same function, because the randomized circuit was making it more efficient, but now when I make the quantum version of the randomized circuit who knows how its efficiency compares to the deterministic circuit. So, that is why I did not want to 
uh, concede that, but it is I would imagine that you could always come up with some sort of setting where uh, this is still better like something which is you know simulating some uh, large random process maybe where you can always typically uh, come up with these uh, sorts of examples to illustrate a point, but by and large uh, I think we are, we are not yet there yeah or comment the comment was that uh, in a in a uh, randomized classical circuit you have to generate a lot of random bits and then you have to use them one by one. So, you know maybe I need a lot of resources to run them in parallel whereas here I could hope to run the whole thing simultaneously in parallel. So, I do not want to agree with that because uh, you know as we have discussed earlier it is not really quite that simple. So, there is this huge monster of measurement still sitting in the room right. So, uh, when I run the classical randomized circuit in parallel then I can access all the answers right. Now, here uh, actually I cannot access all the answers. So, what did I really gain is not clear. So, I really want to be careful about this I mean quantum is amazing I mean it gives you a lot of new things right. But uh, it is not like a it is not uh, trivially uh, you know, it is not trivializing everything else that is what I mean to say ok. So, yeah that these are uh, very good points, uh, but yeah I think that right now we are we are still not uh, at a place where we can uh, really claim that quantum is buying, a, buying us too much.